All right, well, thank you everyone for coming here today, and thank you to A Star for including Dr. Anywhere as a part of this amazing event. So I got the infamous post-lunch slot, so I know for most people this is nap time, so if I see any sleepy eyes out there, um, I won't be offended. The seats do look very cozy. So um, just to start off, my name is Athena, and I am the CEO of Dr. Anywhere. And today, we will be talking about health and healthcare trends. So for most of us here, we're, you know, consumers, and health is one of those things we know is very important, but we probably don't take very seriously, and a part of that is because the healthcare journey is just, it's, it's very confusing for most of us, it's also very scary, and coming from healthcare myself, you know, I, half the time I don't understand what's going on, so that can be a bit scary, but changes are in the horizon, and today I will talk about three main things. One is healthcare trends that are um, coming our way to shape the industry and how they will improve our overall uh, journey. And um, also we're gonna understand the key challenges and issues in the healthcare industry, as well as the gaps that need to be addressed. And lastly, I'll also talk about Doctor Anywhere and how we are trying to address these gaps. And then at the end, we'll have a short Q&A as well. So let's start off with artificial intelligence and robotics. So for most of us, when we think about AI, we think about things like the Terminator, right? So, um, you know, to be honest, it's n really not that ominous. So um, a lot of what's going on in, um, in the industry is really a lot more subtle. And the idea is that these innovations are really there to make sure that um, when it comes to providers, when it comes to patients, we have a better way of accessing um, what is you know, needed in the healthcare industry. And um, with AI, tools exist to direct patients to the right providers and in turn providers to the right diagnosis. So it is expected that by 2020, around 20% of healthcare and 40% of science organizations will achieve productivity through the adoption of AI technology and between 15 to 20%. So one great example of how AI aids doctors is through a software that analyzes patterns of speech and writing that determines the best course of treatment for uh, mental diseases such as Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, Huntington's disease, PTSD, or even neurodevelopmental conditions such as autism and ADHD. So um, there is a robot that is currently in the market right now that um, can help in autism, especially uh, speech therapy. So one that is currently already in use is called the Dream Robot and children with autism um, engage more readily with robots rather than humans, so um, because robots are simple and uh, predictable. Next is e-commerce. So you'll see a lot of news right now about things like Amazon and iHerb, and um, e-commerce really is riding the wave of growth in the healthcare tech sector. This is because healthcare is the next big thing in online retailing space, and there is a large amount of untapped potential in the market. The increase in life expectancy, together with the increase in demand for quality healthcare products, has increased the demand for healthcare supplies as a whole. Across many countries of the world, consumers are very familiar with the convenience of online purchasing and expect consistency in their omnichannel experience. In traditional tr distribution channels, Multiple parties have always had a finger in the healthcare pie. These can be manufacturers, wholesalers, distributors, uh, pharmaceutical, pharmaceuticals, uh, health businesses, doctors, and hospitals, even insurance companies. E-commerce can cut costs by creating a direct relationship between the manufacturer and the patient. We see platforms such as iHerb and Amazon, which I mentioned earlier, consolidating quite quickly as they are able to bring a wealth of options and conveniences to the end user. The next is social media. So many of you are users of social media, um, and according to Business Insider, uh, about 452,000 tweets are sent uh, every minute, 120 new LinkedIn accounts are created, for 46,000 Instagram posts, and 900,000 Facebook logins, um, on, and 50% or more are, are on mobile devices. 
So healthcare companies are creating social communities to connect, collaborate, and communicate with consumers. Patients are bonding with their network of providers. Insurers are providing um, services to their members and population uh, health management through programs that are, are social media related. So to give you an example of one such um, app is Clue, which is created for women to track their monthly periods. And it really emphasizes on community to tackle taboo topics and also to create a safe space for women to exchange information and empower themselves. And what social media also allows is for us to always stay connected. And with the rise of social media, with affordable technology, uh, widespread access to Wi-Fi, and greater acceptance of sharing, uh, sharing of data, uh, things are radically changing. And healthcare providers engage with and monitor the well-being of consumers through all of these tools. Um, connected technology is also meeting the demands of consumers who increasingly expect more transparency and choice regarding their treatment and referral decisions. We are seeing a rise in the creation of digital apps that let consumers across their own healthcare information and online services and social networking platforms that let consumers see advice and inf information where, when, and how they want it. So lastly, um, in terms of trends, is also more personalized healthcare. Personalized healthcare can mean services or medicine tailored to the unique needs and genetic makeup and lifestyle of each patient. So moving past a one-size-fits-all approach could lead to fewer ineffective interventions and better outcomes. And as we move into a healthcare landscape increasingly customized for some patients, both in treatment and in service, we must also make sure that we're expanding access so that more patients can benefit from its advantages. So now moving on, um, gaps in the market. So after being in healthcare for, for about a year now with Doctor Anywhere, uh, we've seen that there are four main gaps in the market right now. The first, which is fragmented regulatory landscape. And so while some fragmentation is to be expected um, in a region as diverse as Asia, there remains inconsistencies in device classifications, mutual recognition agreements, clinical trial requirements, and other regulatory areas. These inconsistencies make it hard for medical technology companies to bring innovation and innovative products to patients in many parts of the region. With the pace of technological progress accelerating, regulatory processes will require ever more technical skills in the coming years. And more action is needed to attract, retain, and incubate regulatory talent in both industry and government. This will require outreach to young professionals who may not be aware that many of the exciting job opportunities uh, in regulatory affairs. Um, the second is an aging population and rise in chronic disease. So we know this very well in Singapore. And an aging population and changes in societal behavior are contributing to a steady increase in these common and costly long-term health problems. The middle class is growing, and with urbanization accelerating, people are adopting a more sedentary lifestyle. This is pushing obesity rates and cases of diseases such as diabetes upwards. According to the World Health Organization, chronic disease prevalence is expected to rise by 57% uh, by the year 2020. In Asia, there are over 190 million people with diabetes, and Asia Pacific will have the greatest number of non-communicable diseases uh, amongst the region by 2020. Emerging markets will be hardest hit as population growth is anticipated to be most significant in developing nations. Increased demand on healthcare systems due to chronic disease has become a major concern for many governments. And the last thing I want to touch upon in terms of a gap is the lack of accessible education, tools, and resources. The healthcare system is complex and convol convoluted, and coupled with the overload of information on the internet, many people are confused when it comes to healthcare and what the right approach is to treat and manage their diseases. This brings about the need for clear, direct, and easily accessible and accurate information about healthcare. It is the responsibility of industry players to take this on and to provide the right resources and tools. 
So what we've done at Dr. Anywhere to, to, to address these issues is really to understand our end users and to develop a service that is um, that, that really you know, bears in mind what they need as an end consumer. And I'd say our end product allows our users to, one, save costs. Our platform enables you to see a doctor without worrying about transport costs, and our consult consultation costs are typically lower than that of a normal GB consultation. The second benefit that we provide is that um, you can save time. So with our platform, you no longer have to travel to and from the clinic or wait in the clinic with long queues and short opening hours. And lastly is to bring convenience to our consumers. So we're available 24 seven or on demand on public holidays and on weekends. And we offer medication delivery service that arrives at your doorstep within three hours. So our service is really quite simple. Uh, so we have three main services. One is our GP service, which allows you to connect to a GP through a video consult. We also have aesthetics consultation services. So that is really for advice on skin, hair, aging, and cosmetic procedures. Uh, and lastly is lactation consulting. So this one is really quite interesting because it's something that doesn't exist in the market. Um, and we were able to introduce this quite quickly a few months ago. And this is really to provide new mothers with um, natal advice. So it could be things like, how do I prepare for a new baby? How do I set a feeding schedule? Um, you know, what devices, what equipment should I buy uh, before the baby comes? So a lot of this is to address existing gaps in the market and to, to be able to provide people with very simple solutions. So how does Doctor Anywhere work? So it's an online-based uh, platform, so you can download our app. And once you download our app, there's a simple registration process. Everything mimics the experience of being at a clinic. Uh, what happens is you do a simple registration. You can then fill out a pre-consultation survey, so things like what symptoms are you currently experiencing and um, why, why do you need to see a doctor. And with, within minutes, you're then um, connected to a doctor. So for a 10 minute consultation, we charge $20. And um, once the, the, you, you receive a diagnosis from the doctor, you will then receive an MC if you need it or a referral to a specialist or A&E and we'll also deliver uh, the medication to your, to your doorstep within a two, two hour period. So I think the most interesting part here and what a lot of people are curious about is the journey to how we created our app. And so the app started with a problem. Uh, our founder was doing social service and so he was delivering meals to um, a senior care center. And what he found was that at the senior care center there were no doctors on site. And a lot of them were, sh you know, showing acute symptoms like coughs, you know, m may have been sneezing. And he, he was asking just very innocently, why is there no doctor on site? And the reality is this, doctors are very expensive and they can't be on site at all times at places where they need to be. And that is where the idea for an app came from. And at first, the idea was to create a, an app for a um, home-based care. So how do we do a, a house call for a doctor to, to come to a senior care center or to go somewhere where they needed to be? But the reality is that there is a uh, resource constraint in Singapore, so that was out of the question. And this is where the idea of a video consultation platform came about. And um, this idea had existed in other countries in the world, but in Singapore, it, it hadn't existed yet. And so um, this, is, this, is, this is the start of Doctor Anywhere, and this is how we came about. And from there, that's, that's when we started building the product. And so product came first. We had to make sure that we could build a prototype that could be tested in the market and to see what the market response would be. And that's where we then started building the team. So, so I'd say in terms of an entrepreneurial journey, this is the one that we took. Our biggest challenges in terms of setting up the company was two things. One was establishing the space. Again, telemedicine is not new. It's been around for seven, eight years in other countries, but in Singapore at least, there was no regulatory framework around it. There was nothing that existed that was similar to what we were doing. 
And so um, we, we really had to figure out what we're trying to. And in this regard, understanding the importance of collaboration is key in building a new industry. We have been actively working hard with healthcare professionals, with the government, with other companies um, to shape the industry and to address a growing healthcare demand in Singapore. And I'd say our top priority right now isn't really to push the product, but to create more education and understanding around what we're doing and really to encourage a lot of um, healthcare professionals to make the healthcare journey easier for our consumers. The second is then on the consumer side is to shift mindset. So we have a booth downstairs and I spoke to some of you out here. And the question is always this, you know, how can you do a consultation between a patient and a doctor without doing it physically? And the answer is that we, we, we can't cover the entire healthcare space, but what we see our role is, is to, to be a touch point along the healthcare value chain and to provide convenience where we can. And the biggest gap and the, the birth of our company was based on the fact that there is a huge resource constraint in, in the industry. And so we, we don't, you know, our goal isn't to cover 100% of the market, but if we can uh, make it so that the people who need immediate care, the people who um, have very simple conditions like a cold, a flu, or you know the fever, can download our app and see a doctor immediately, it would mean that less of these people are going to a &E. It would mean that less of these people are waiting in lines at clinics so that people who do have serious or chronic illnesses can see their uh, medical professionals faster. And you know, so, so these are the type of things that we're really trying to educate the public on and really, really hope that over time we, we can make a difference and make it so that everyone can, can have you know, access. Uh, there's more transparency in the market and it, it's just more of a democratic process in terms of who can see a doctor and who can't. So we've been in the market for about a year now and it, it was quite difficult when we first started. Um, the original product that we built wasn't very sound. And uh, with that, there was just a lot of resistance, both from doctors and from patients. Um, but over time, uh, our, our focus, again, was on education and to talk to as many people as we could, whether it's doctors, whether it's patients, whether it's companies that um, are in or around the healthcare industry. And so it's, it's, it's been a really interesting uh, but fruitful journey because what we've been able to see is that our, our our app works, right? And we are able to bring accessibility to all the users of our apps, whether it's doctors, whether it's um, patients. Uh, we have a lot of doctors on our platform who are retired, but you know have many years of experience with them and who would select practice, and our app gives them the opportunity to do just that. Um, the second success that we have is really just to, to, to simplify healthcare. So what we found is, you know, especially when we're downstairs, a lot of people are asking us questions like, do you have an AI element to your platform? Do you have like wearables that you can link to, to, to the app? And the reality is that these complicate the overall journey that we can provide. And we want to keep it simple. It, it, healthcare needs to be simple. It's really a direct relationship between the patient and the doctor. And that's exactly what we're trying to do. We're trying to make it safe. We're trying to make it easy. And we're trying to make it accessible. And if we can do that, we call ourselves a success to a certain degree. And the last is growing the team. And so um, when I first joined last year, we had a team of two people. And now we have an office of 30. And so, um, you know, it, it's been a really interesting ride to, to just to see um, how, how the team has grown. And what we've made an active decision to employ most of our people who aren't from the healthcare space. Because what we found is that people in healthcare have a very predetermined, you know, idea of what healthcare should be. And we want to be closer to our consumers. We want something that makes sense to them and something that um, people can easily adopt. And that, is, that goes back to simplifi simplifying healthcare. So, um, you know, all, all these three elements have come together to, to bring us to where we are today. In addition to the app, you know, I reiterate the fact that education has been a very important part of our journey. So not only do we have the online app right now, we've all, we're also opening clinics. So we're also opening a DA clinic, and we will have about 15 to 20 by the end of the year. 
The reason is this. Uh, we want to create an onli online to offline model. And um, you know, when it comes to healthcare, the concern is always this. I, I want to know who my doctor is. I want to be able to see my doctor in person. And so we, we understand that. And we don't want to do anything that's too radically different. So for any entrepreneurs out there, for anyone who's starting a business, it's always, remember, it's always important to remember that you need to listen to your consumers. Always listen to what they're saying and don't ignore them. It, you know, the, the old motto is this, the consumers don't know what they want. Uh, that's true to a certain degree, right? But, but at the end of the day, uh, when it comes to healthcare, it's something that's very personal. And the more personal a product is or a service is, the more the consumer wants to know that you're listening to them. So the, the idea of opening these clinics um, what was a result of really talking to our consumers on a very consistent basis. And the, the, the on, so the DA clinics um, are a marketing point for us. So when a patient comes to the clinic, we've created a journey where there's an offline touch. So they'll still talk to nurses, they'll still talk to doctors. But there's also a tech element to it where they can still do a teleconsult through the Doctor Anywhere platform. And we'll be working with a lot of uh, partners, um, you know, AI partners with device makers to also enhance the overall journey so that we can bring something new to the market. <laughs> so with our online and offline model, um, what we can do is right now to focus on uh, common illnesses. So. Illnesses that we currently can do uh, through teleconsult or we can, we can diagnose and treat our um, fevers, coughs, sore throat, diarrhea, vomiting, flu, cold rash, skin conditions, cold sores, headache, and red eye. So these are all conditions that are endorsed by the MOH. And we've worked quite closely with the MOH as well to be a leader in this field. And so um, it, it, uh, you know, telemedicine is something that's very new to Singapore. And so as a pioneer in this industry, what we've had to also focus on was to see, you know, how do we become regulatory sound? And so we reached out to um, the government when we first started to say, hey, you know, we, we want to influence uh, what is going on. Can we can we be a part of, of the sandbox uh, to to um, to dictate what regulations will be? And so this is something we're working on right now, and hopefully, you know, we'll have more to share with you in the future about what what these regulations are. Um, you know, for symptoms that are not too common, the doctor will make a judgment as to whether you're suitable for a video consultation based on his or her best assessment. Um, what we also see is very popular is is a lot of people calling in, a lot of parents calling in for their children. Our platform isn't only for diagnosis, but is a good triaging me mechanism. So we've gotten calls at, say, two or three in the morning. And these are for worried parents who don't know whether their, their children have to be admitted into A&E. And so a lot of times, um, it's, you know, the, the, something like ours isn't just to um, prescribe medication or isn't just for chronic med uh, illnesses, but it, it's really just to offer peace of mind to a lot of the consumers out there who don't, who can't readily see a doctor or go to the hospital, um, you know, at three in the morning or four in the morning. And we also uh, offer a host of home-based services. So um, the easiest way to illustrate this is we have mobile phlebotomists. So essentially, they're nurses that can run around, and they can go to your home and give you vaccinations. They can do health screenings, and um, you know, conduct a variety of tests. And even if you have a helper at home who need to do recertification uh, for their for their um, work visas, we can also send someone to your home to do that quite easily. And um, what happens after that is if you have any questions about your, uh, about your report or your results, you can then schedule a teleconsult through our platform. So a lot of it, everything's done at, in the comfort of your own home. And then lastly is chronic disease management. So um, our platform can also use, be used for chronic disease management. Uh, such as for diabetes, hypertension, and other secondary diseases which may arise from chronic disease conditions. And we can do a quick follow-up through a video call to save you the hassle of having to go all the way to the clinic just to check in with your doctor. And to illustrate this, um, we actually currently work with a charity called Tai Hua Guan. 
So some of you may know who they are. So they have a number of senior care centers across Singapore. And so, you know, a lot of people have wondered, besides just the consumer app, right, how, what, what other use cases are there? It doesn't seem like it, it's something that's very um, adaptable, but it, it's really about the type of workflows that we create, right? So for this particular charity, um, what we've done, and the gap that we've identified is that a lot of their seniors are over 80 years old. They often have acute or chronic conditions that require uh, you know, um, a, a doctor's visit every three or four months. But having to go see a doctor is very stressful for them. And so we worked quite closely with the charity to figure out how can we bring te a telemedicine platform to you and make it easier. And so we, we worked with them for about two months. And what we actually ended up doing was to train all of their nurses on site to call our doctors through our platform. And um, if there were any uh, you know, acute conditions, if there were any chronic conditions, we can then um, treat them through our platform and send the medication over. So it would save them a trip to the, to the doctor. And through that, we've seen um, you know, much lower admittance into A&E through our platform.